IDF team exclamation point though we just entered the quote unquote neural rendering era how do you see Nvidia and the rest of the industry advancing the AI ML future of games neural tessellation neural destruction deformation neural fluid simulation ML assisted <laughs> shader compilation <laughs> and uh, and or <laughs> PSO gathering. Man, that's extreme. Um, yeah. Separately, how would uh, NVIDIA's neural radiance fields, NERFs, be used in games? NVIDIA mentioned the technology in their quote-unquote neural rendering presentation, but haven't seen much of it in the gaming context. Um, what do you think about this, Alex? Because obviously, um, with CES 2025, we did get like a preview of sorts, demos that were basically saying, hey, we could do this in future. And um, right, yeah. How do you how do you see it actually coming to be? Obviously, we've got this situation now, which is quite interesting, with um, uh, Mega Geo actually shipping with Alan Wake. So, right. is it that far away? How's this going to wow. play out? Do you think there's a lot of really cool stuff in here that almost are like like you can see like examples of this why this would be good, and I think the neural the neural materials demo is probably like the best like example that you can extrapolate onto other fields because there we saw uh, materials that were like more filmic in quality with a lot more complexity and nuance to the surface shading than we've seen in games before running in a like a smaller uh, uh, footprint in in uh, VRAM as well as complexity versus in rendering versus what it would be like to run a filmic material. Obviously, if you just ran like the standard games materials, it'd be cheaper in runtime performance on the GPU to just use the normal standard shading model. But that is like trading uh, space uh, in VRAM and as well as potential time versus like uh, a an offline simulation. Uh, so you're trading, it's like a trade, you're trading real-time performance for VRAM and potentially higher quality. And I think for the things that you mentioned here, like neural tessellation, uh, destruction and deformation, you could have like some sort of base, almost like wireframe, lower, lower quality representation that the machine learning extrapolates upon and gives you a higher consistent quality. Uh, maybe at the cost for runtime performance. So all those fields you mentioned there, they all seem like they're really good ideas. We heard much the same from Tom Peterson in 2020. When did we meet with him? In 2021, 2022? Rich, you know, area, like he yeah. was already talking mm -hmm. about like using it to modify geometry in real time. Yeah. And I think that is the way things are going. The machine learning assisted shader compilation or PSO gathering, <laughs> I don't know what that would look like, but what I almost could imagine is there could be like a mode set on a GPU where we would approximate a shader that is being said to be compiled in the driver with something like a like a an approximate like you could do in an emulator, and maybe machine learning could make that approximate better for real time usage in games at at a GPU performance cost, but without causing like a super hardcore CPU related compilation time. That's just a guess. Um, well, some might say, Alex, that there should be a more fundamental solution to that particular issue. Than <laughs> I agree with high, that. Too. Hiving it off to machine learning to sort out. <laughs> I, yeah, I would. I would love that if there was a more fundamental change to the way things are done. <laughs> I think nerfs um, have seen their usage and research primarily about like real world objects. Uh, being kind of like photographed and manipulated and brought into like, so like 2D images becoming 3D things that could be them be manipulated. And I think the issue with that is in games, you have to want to, you're going to want to have real time lighting and then like relighting these things in real time with typical techniques uh, that rely primarily on things like triangles. I don't know if it's such a good fit for games at this exact moment. But it could be maybe more of a fit for things that we don't represent well with triangles, like, you know, like clouds or, you know, stuff like that, you know, stuff mm -hmm. that is more amorphous and, you know, doesn't need to be exact anyway. So that's the way I see all this. But this is all like amazing stuff. And like, you can just like dream of what this might look like, I think. So, yeah. Does this, do you dream of this, Oliver? <laughs> um, I do dream of this to some degree. I think like, trying to abstract it, I would kind of expect that a lot of the approaches here will be to try to make real-time approximations 
of traditionally offline rendered things using machine learning to kind of bridge that gap. I think we're seeing that with neural materials. I think it's like stuff that you would see normally in films that have such incredible computational requirements or in offline simulations that their use would never really be appropriate for a game. Like you see this with fluid simulations, you can go back 20 years in films, see crazy fluid simulations, see crazy hair simulations, stuff like this that we just don't have an analog for in games. And mm. I would kind of hope and expect that people would try to work on getting machine learning to fill that gap and give you a colorably good result for maybe some mm. lower you know, resolution source there. Um, and I'd love to see something for fluid simulation in particular there. Um, yeah, I think that's probably an area that a lot of engineers are spending a lot of time trying to trying to crack for, for games at the moment. But yeah, I hope we do see that. 